Hello and welcome to Y Media's exclusive interview. Election is around the corner on June 2nd. Ontarians will go to the poll and select their next premier, electing a new government in place. And today I have NDP candidate in Brampton North, Sandeep Singh. Thank you for joining us today. How are you? I'm good. Thank you so much for having me uh, for this interview. Absolutely. So tell me about who is Sandeep Singh? When he's not a candidate. <laughs> so, uh, my name is Sandeep Singh, and um, I was born in Canada, uh, in Quebec, Montreal. Um, did my double master's in MBA in healthcare services and master's in hospital administration. Uh, worked with uh, World Health Organization, ISAC in Tanzania and Guyana. Uh, before the elections, I was part of uh, a multinational company uh, I was working as a marketing director for that company. And um, I have three kids. Um, one reason that I'm running as a candidate is for my kids, uh, is because we have seen the education cuts, healthcare cuts, and I want to give a good future to my kids and the residents of Brampton North so that uh, the pandemic has taught us a lot. And um, I lost, uh, like one of my friends, he's still on bed. L uh, his father is dead. So that's, there are a few stories behind it. That's the reason I'm a candidate today. Uh, I'm, I'm a candidate to bring a change, the change that people are waiting from 19 years. You've become a candidate for like a little bit over a month and a half. You're a first time candidate. What is your experience like? And what have you learned that was beyond your expectations? I'm enjoying this journey. I'm actually, uh, I'm a people's person, so I love to talk to people, uh, knocking doors, going to Walmart, or Fertino's, you know, having chat with them, uh, listening to the positives and negatives. Uh, so I'm enjoying it. Uh, there's a lot to learn from it. Uh, the best thing that I've learned is, uh, this, this journey has taught me a lot. It has taught me, uh, like people are happy after, nine, after the pandemic, they want to come out, uh, and they're also not satisfied. They're not happy with the governments from last 19 years. But personally, they, this, this pandemic, the, I would say the jails that we had for a year, year and a half, so they're coming out of it. And um, I, I'm, I'm actually grateful to residents of Brampton North who gave me the opportunity to become a candidate uh, so that I can you know, be part of their sorrows and happiness uh, and listen to the stories. How will life change in Brampton with an NDP government? This is a million dollar question actually. Uh, life will be very different. Why? NDP is not a party, it's a movement. It's a movement against injustice, it's a movement against unaffordability. Um, NDP is the only party who stands for worker rights. For st it sta uh, NDP wants another hospital in Brampton. They want, uh, we want uh, a, a university in Brampton. We need to reduce auto insurance. This, these all issues uh, matter to everyday individual in Brampton. So that's the reason we need NDP government, and that's the change that NDP government will bring. Tell us about the auto insurance. This is something that uh, was announced that I don't think the other parties have announced on auto insurance. So what is the NDP plan on doing? So that's a really good question, actually. Um, I remember, I think you might be, uh, you might remember that too, that from the last 15, approximately 15, 16 years, every four years, we hear about auto insurance. In 2013, liberals promised that they're gonna lower auto insurance and then they said it's a stretched promise. Uh, the point is auto insurance and the postal code discrimination, they go hand in hand. Uh, it's not right. Um, I was in a char party uh, two days ago and there was one of the resident of Brampton he was telling us a story, story that he lives in uh, Woodbridge. He used to live in Bro Woodbridge. And he said he has the same driving record 
He has the same car. He is the same person. The only difference is that he moved from that city to Brampton and his insurance increased by $300. So that's not right. We have other provinces in Canada like Quebec uh, or uh, British Columbia where the auto insurance is 40% less what we are paying. So NDP government would ban postal code discrimination. We will form a committee that will do a study whether Bram uh, Ontario needs uh, public insurance or a public private insurance or there are something uh, some changes that needs to be done um, on the uh, private insurances as well the only way to reduce auto insurance is to actually work on it and unfortunately both other parties have failed us uh, and how soon will that happen reducing so the postal the code discrimination rate? will be done as soon as we form the government the ban on postal code discrimination will be the first thing that we do after forming the government. Okay, and talk to me about health care. What is the plan there uh, for an NDP government? Health care is a really important topic. It's, it's important because we, we are coming out of a pandemic. Uh, we have seen a failure in health care infrastructure. Uh, I have seen other parties talking about infrastructure, but what infrastructure is most important? the infrastructure that can save lives, infrastructure that can educate our kids. That's the infrastructure we are looking for. So uh, city like Brampton, having a population of 700,000 people has only one hospital. Although 40 minutes away from this, there is a city called Hamilton, a population of 600,000 people has three hospitals, one university and few colleges. So this is so unfair, why do Bramptonians have to fight to get their fair share. This was, this was responsibility of the government to provide us at least three hospitals because we have a population of 700,000 people. The present hospital, as per the reports, is working on a 500% uh, functionality. Uh, we don't have enough hum human resource uh, in, this in this hospital. So we need three hospitals, we need to hire more doctors, we need to hire more nurses, we need to hire more PSWs, and that's the only way we could in improve healthcare. Along with, when we talk about healthcare, it's just not only about the buildings, or it's just not hiring uh, doctors, nurses. It's also about what are the services that uh, Bramptonians or uh, people of Ontario should get. So we are pro-pharmacare. Uh, uh, not if, if uh, we are going to form a government on second and Ontario will be the first province to have uh, a pharma care, uh, dental care and the uh, mental health uh, care will be covered under OHIP. So these are the things that people need. These, we should have got these things many years ago, but now is the time. Let's vote NDP and bring these changes. The NDP have uh, said that they will not build Highway 413, which is a plan for the PCs. And uh, they also said uh, for the gas tax, that's going to be lowered by 5.7 cents a liter come July 1st for six months, which is part of the PC plan. And the Liberals said they'll do the same. Uh, this is something the NDP will not do. So what is the NDP going to do when it comes to do those two things, when it comes to the gas tax? Uh, to make things more affordable given it's over two dollars a liter and uh, infrastructure when it comes to not building 413. So uh, I want to take you back to 2018. There were two promises that Mr. Doug Ford made. First one, he said when liberals privatized hydro, he said he will reduce hydro prices. In fact, when I see my bill, there is a raise of 4.3 percent in that. Second promise he made was that if conservative power, if conservative government forms a government in 2018, the gas prices will not go up. While coming to this studio, we just fill the gas. And I assume that everyone knows that the gas prices has gone up. So the promises that Mr. Ford is making today, the history is that he doesn't stand by those promises. The second thing is, 
you talk about 413. 413 will be built after 10 years. The congestion on highways, we see it today. So does Mr. Ford want to say that we will have to bear that congestion for next 10 years? We need solution to those congestions. We need solution to that rush today. And the only solution to that is the proposal that we have bought is that we are going to uh, ask our truck driver brothers to move on 407 and they will not have to pay for 407 and that would that means 22,000 trucks that drive on 400 series every day will travel on 407 instead of 400 so that means if I'm traveling on 400 series I will get more time to spend with my family instead of wasting time on my road uh, on 400 series so that's that's the thing that people need. People don't want to wait for 10 years. And who, who have seen what's going to happen after 10 years? Why should we wait for 10 years when we have an infrastructure that is not being used properly? If you remember, uh, I think a few months ago, uh, our airplane landed on 407. So that, it's, it's, that infrastructure piece is being misused if it's not properly used. So it has to be used properly. And the only way to do that is that uh, we ask our truck our driver brothers to move on to 407 so that there is less congestion on 400 series and we spend more time with our family and it would also financially support our truckers. And what about the reducing gas prices which is a big item right now? So our NDP proposal is that we are going to regulate the gas prices. Like we are not promising something for six months or four months. The point is that we need to get rid of these issues once for all, and the only way to do that is to regulate it. Okay, and will that saving come about how quickly after an NDP government? So uh, gas regulation will be done as soon as we form the government. And I recall you mentioned university, which is what uh, other municipalities have with less of a population. This was something that uh, many Bramptonians have talked about for a very long time. What does it look like with an NDP government for getting a Brampton University? NDP is the only party who is talking about a standalone Brampton University. We need a full-fledged funded university. We was we were about to get that in 2018 when Mr. Ford uh, changed his plans. Uh, otherwise, we would have university today in Brampton. Our kids uh, wouldn't have to go to some other cities to study. They could have studied in Brampton if Mr. Ford uh, wouldn't have considered that Brampton doesn't need a university. We need a full-fledged, funded, stand-alone university in Brampton. and. NDP supports that. What's happening in Brampton North? It was a riding that was previously liberal. In 2018, it turned NDP. And what is the consensus you're getting at the doors as, or as when you talk to people? So it's a really good question. Uh, it's an NDP riding, and it will, uh, I, I mean, um, I'm pretty sure it's going to remain NDP riding. Um, but the fact is the fight is between NDP and conservatives and it's really important that uh, people do come out and vote because we really need a good representation uh, in Queens Park. We have seen education cuts, we have seen healthcare cuts, we have seen unaffordable auto insurance, we have seen that during the pandemic uh, Mr. Ford was unable to deliver uh, to small businesses so there's a lot of stuff that needs to be done. We have seen 19 years of liberals and conservatives. So it's really important that we keep Brampton North orange. And uh, I, I, it won't be a lie if I say that, yes, the fight is between orange and blue. It's between conservatives and uh, NDP. But I'm pretty sure the voters would make a right choice. Why do you say that? Why are you counting the liberals out in Brampton North? Uh, I think it's... Uh, people who don't trust liberals anymore um, and they had only seven seats um, I'm pretty sure uh, people do remember uh, Kathleen Wynne's governance and uh, the, the 
um, they do remember that it was liberal government who fired 1,600 nurses. It was liberal government who uh, promised to reduce auto insurance and then called it a stretched promise. It was liberals who uh, were unable to bring university or the hospitals to Brampton. So uh, we l people haven't forgotten what happened for 15 years. 15 years. They had 15 years to deliver. But they were unable to deliver. And that's the reason I think uh, uh, liberal candidates are not in fight in Brampton at least. Okay, and I mean, I have to ask you that if it's the 15 years that you're saying people remember uh, of the liberal government, now you're saying that also that uh, do people, will they remember the four years with the PCs? Because you're saying it's between the PCs and the NDP. And is, is that an option that uh, given what you're saying has been done under the Ford government, uh, that people could potentially still vote blue? So uh, I, I mean, I would leave it to the public, but I personally feel that this election is very important. It's very important for our kids. It's very important for the future of our kids. Uh, so peop I'm telling everyone that when you're about to cast your vote, just think of your kids. And I guarantee you that if you think about your kids, you're going to vote NDP. What are some of the things that the NDP will do when it comes to kids? We are talking about child care. We are talking to reduce class sizes. We are talking uh, about, of course, the health care, uh, uh, pharma care, dental care. I'm going to uh, share a story with you. So I met an individual. Um, she was, I think, 11, 12 years old. And she wanted to get bracelets. Braces. Um, but her family conditions were not that good. The point is, why should a child have to think about the family conditions, financial conditions, when it comes to the dental care? And that's the reason we have this dental plan. That's the reason that we understand that dental care is health care. And that's the reason we are fighting for it. And that's the reason, once we form the government, this will be part of our a uh, few things that we are going to do as soon as we form the government. Thank you so much, Sandeep Singh. Any final words to our audience? So um, advanced polls have already started. It's really important that you come out and vote. Vote for anyone you like. Uh, I would prefer if you vote for us. Uh, the fight is very close between NDP and conservative. So think before you would. And if people have questions from you, uh, how can they reach you to answer any of the policy items you guys want to accomplish? Sure, so that's a really good question. So I share my personal phone numbers. I think I am only one of you who share their personal numbers. My personal number is 416-816-3337, 416-816-3337. I feel that uh, MPP candidate or an MPP needs to be accessible to the people. And this is the first step. By sharing my number, I'm proving that I will be very accessible to MPP for the next four years. Thank you so much, Sandeep Singh. This was Y Media's exclusive interview. Election day is around the corner on June 2nd, where Ontarians will go to the polls and choose their next premier. Thank you for joining us, Thank Sandeep so Singh, and best Thank of you. luck on this Thank campaign trail. Thank you. Thank you, and be safe.